As we come back to our evaluation of Asher Norman's book, 26 Reasons Why Jews Don't Believe in Jesus, I want to look at his arguments now against Christianity on the basis of what he says concerning the Apostle Paul. It's a whole section of his book where he directs attacks against the credibility of Paul the Apostle. It's his contention that Christianity is the religion of Paul and not of Jesus. He claimed that the whole notion of faith in Jesus, instead of obedience to the law for salvation, was all Paul's idea. And now, uh, because of that, he's going to do everything that he can do to undermine the credibility, the authority of the Apostle Paul. But again, his premise is that Christianity as we know it, Christianity as we believe it, is Pauline. It is not of Jesus. It is that which was originated by this one called Paul the Apostle. Now, he claims that Paul was a man that was deeply troubled. He claims that Paul was a man that had a very volatile personality. He accused Paul of being a liar. He accused Paul of being opposed to the law of God. He argued that Paul was an employee of the Roman government that was there to undermine any kind of political rebellion of the Jews against the Romans. Uh, that's why he was rightly stoned, because he directed attention to Jesus as God. He claimed even that the original Christians were suspicious of Paul, and that Paul had no apostolic uh, credentials. So he lists all of these supposed arguments against the credibility of the Apostle Paul. Now it is interesting that in virtually every one of the uh, accusations that he levels against Paul are those that come from Paul's contemporaries, those that come from those that were the enemies of Paul. And Paul, let's face it, if you've ever read anything of the New Testament scriptures, you know that Paul had his enemies. You know that Paul created waves, particularly among the Judaizers, those that Norman would have found to be his company. Because what Paul said was in direct contrast to the theology of the Judaizers that put the keeping of the law as a means of salvation. Paul never objected to the law of God. Paul was not opposed to the law of God, except as a way to achieve merit and favor before God, because we are inherently sinners, and we cannot keep the law of God ourselves. It's interesting that when you look at the a book of 2 Corinthians particularly. 2 Corinthians in so many ways, I suppose, is the most personal of all of Paul's epistles. And it's there where Paul addresses many of these same accusations that Norman leveled against him, that were leveled against him by the contemporaries, to prove beyond all shadow of doubt that Paul indeed was an apostle of God. He had seen Christ, Christ commissioned him, Christ gave him the authority, and the religion and the message that Paul preached indeed was the gospel. Now, in dealing with this, it would be ludicrous, I think, to uh, go through each of those uh, particular charges uh, and answer them directly. He says Paul's a liar, I say Paul's not a liar. He says that Paul was not an apostle, I say he's an apostle, because the Bible says it. But there are presuppositions here. Let's again bring it down to the level of the presuppositions. If we believe the New Testament is the inspired Word of God, and this is the bottom line, if I believe that the New Testament is the inspired Word of God, then every one of his objections against Paul is reduced, is reduced to zero. Because the Bible tells me that Paul was converted to Jesus Christ. Yes, the original Christians were suspicious of him. Why wouldn't they be? A natural response here was one that was out persecuting them and killing them, and now all of a sudden he comes into their midst and says, I'm a Christian. Well, sure, they're going to be suspicious. But that suspicion was soon eliminated, and the church recognized Paul to be a man of God, to be a preacher of the gospel. Oh, he had his enemies against those that were opposing the gospel. But Paul was a friend to those that believed in Jesus Christ. The New Testament, if we believe it to be the inspired Word of God, it identifies Paul not 
uh, as the founder of some religion, but as an apostle of Jesus Christ, as a preacher of the gospel, not preaching himself, not preaching his own ideas, but preaching that Jesus of Nazareth indeed was the Son of God, crucified on a Roman cross, buried in a tomb, and raised from the dead. Paul preached the gospel. Christian theology is not Pauline. Christian theology is based upon what God in the Bible has revealed. The Bible makes it clear that there is no scripture that is in our authorized version. It says that there's no scripture of any private interpretation. That literally says that there's no scripture of any private origination. There's no scripture that comes from the mind of man. There's no scripture, if it is the word of God, that is devised by human origination. And Paul, as the apostle, as he writes under the inspiration of the word of God, is writing the word of God, he's preaching the word of God. Christianity is not the consequence of Paul's thinking, of Paul's invention, but it is the revelation of truth from the Holy Spirit of God. Paul preached what was based upon fact didn't make it up. Paul himself tells us that if I preach that Christ rose from the dead and he didn't really in fact rise from the dead, then my preaching is in vain. It's stupid. It's futile. It's fruitless. Paul did not make up anything. Paul preached the gospel of fact that Jesus died, that Jesus was raised from the dead. The Christianity of Paul is the Christianity of God, the Christianity of Jesus Christ.